Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the screen on your 3D printer. Let's scratch to this topic. This may be very common sense for many of you out there, and many people I know don't really use the screen on their 3D printer, but I feel like this might help someone out there. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'll be using QLED K2 Plus as the example for today. Okay, here we are. This is the K2 Plus screen interface. Many of them are really similar to this. It's just a little bit different depending on the company, how they change the style, but many of them is similar to this. The reason why I'm using the K2 Plus as the example is just that I like their interface a lot better than some other interface. Just because when you are printing, you can still use many of these functions. So that's the reason why I'm using this as the example. Right here, we have the home. Here is the printer setting. And right here, the folder is your file, your STL file, your USB and your history print of your 3D printer. Right here is the general setting. And the bottom here is maintenance of your 3D printer. So let's go ahead and start with the first one, home. So this is going to be your home for your 3D printer. When you have something printing, the model is going to show up here and there's extra settings that you can use there. Right here, this is a camera, this is the Wi-Fi, and these two are green, so it indicates that it's working fine. Over here is your nozzle setting, your heated bed setting, and the K2 Plus has a heated chamber. So the third one here is the heated chamber. Right here is your filament, the light, if you press this, the light's gonna shut off. So you can see right here, there's no light. And if we press it again, the light comes back on. Down here is your fan control. And from the home page here, you can control some of the setting in the 3D printer. We can change the nozzle temperature here. So we can change this to 30 if we wanted to. Okay, let's turn that off so that the fan is not running. We can also change the heated bed temperature as well. And we can also change the heated chamber temperature of the K2 Plus here. Right here, if we click here, it's gonna change to the printer setting, and then it's gonna go to filament. And here's all the filament of the 3D printer. That's gonna go back to the home page. And like I said, this is your light, and this is the fan. Once you click the fan, it's gonna jump to the printer setting, and it's gonna be in this page. So that's pretty much it with the home page here. Let's go on to the printer setting here. Right here, you will see all your temperature of the nozzle, the heated bed, and heated chamber. And this 100% here is the printing speed. So if we click it, we can change it to ultra fast, standard, stable, or silent. It will change the printing speed. It will change all the fans and stuff like that to make it compatible with the percentage. Right here, the M off, that is for motor off. If we press this, all the motor is going to disengage, it's going to turn off, and we can move the print head easily. So right now, all the motor is off, and I can move this very easily, like this, back and forth, and stuff like that. The bed you can move, but I don't recommend you move it because it's going to strain on the rods, it's going to strain on the motor, so just don't move the bed. And right here is your control. We can move back and forth, left and right, but it's not allowed because it does not know where your print head or your bed is. The way we can use this control is to home everything. So what I'm going to do is just going to press X and Y home here. Now that we home the X and Y, I'm going to home the bed as well. Now that the bed is home and the X and Y axis is home, we can use this control and move it now. As you see there, the print head is moving as well as the bed. All of this is working. And if we open this, try to move it manually, we cannot do it anymore. The reason is just that all the motors are engaged, so we cannot force it to move. You can if you do it very hard, but I don't recommend. That's going to ruin your 3D printer. So for me, for the longest time, I have no idea why I cannot move it. So what I do is just turn off the 3D printer, turn it back on. But then I found out that you can press this off button right here. And then all the motors is disengaged and the bed falls down on the K2 Plus because it's very heavy. So once we disengage all the motors, we can now move it freely, which is amazing. And over here, it's gonna be your extruder. You can extrude or you can retract. At the bottom here is your fan control. So if you press this, this is the model fan. As you hear right there, that's the fan for cooling the nozzle. Your side fan is your auxiliary fan. Those are the same thing. And the K2 Plus has a back fan, so it's gonna extract all the film inside the 3D printer out the back. Some has carbon filter at the back, but hopefully this does too, I don't remember. To get out of this, you just press the fan button again. Now we're gonna go to filament. The spool holder here is gonna be your size spool holder. As you can see right here, that's my size spool holder. 
you can click the pencil to edit it. 1A is going to be the first slot in the CFS, 1B, second, third, fourth slot. The auto right here is just me that auto refill. If you click this, automatic refill of the same filament. And this 54 right here is the humidity of the CFS. And this hexagon with a the circle there is your CFS setting. You can disable all these settings or you can enable them however you feel like. You can click one of the filament and if you see that it's white out right there, it means that that is selected. So click this, extrude or retract depending on what you want to do. Let's go to the print setting. You can turn on AI detection. It will use the camera to detect if there's like spaghetti uh, not printing well. You can do that, but I don't really do that because I just don't like it. You can do an auto PA calibration with your printing, flow calibration with your printing, stuff like that, waste true blockage detection. You can have all these settings so that the 3D printer know when to stop if there's anything wrong with it. Calibrations, you can do auto leveling, belt tensioning, you can do the cutting calibration, input shaping, all of this, and then you can just click start detecting. And they will do all of this. So let's say your 3D printer is not doing well, you can do all of this and just, it's like a soft reset for your 3D printer. Let's move on to the files. So here's really basic, you can just select the files that you have printed previously. USB drive is going to be the USB over here. Um, it's going to go into the folder and stuff like that. If you cannot connect it to Wi-Fi, you're going to have to use the USB. Hit the file here and then come to the screen and print it. History is what it is. History of the things that you have printed. So now that we have go over the folder, I'm going to go to the setting right here. This is like the general setting for the 3D printer. It will have your screen brightness so you can turn this, you can make it brighter, you can make it darker. Screen off is exactly what it is. So it takes 3 minutes for the screen to turn off. If we can change this to 5 to 120 minutes. Language, of course, language can be English for me. Camera, you can go to the camera setting. You can use the time lapse. Video list is all right here. To export them, you just click, click export, and then it will go to the USB drive. Private policy is just private policy, right? Root account information, if you want to root your 3D printer, you can go inside of the root account information and it will tell you the password and stuff like that. The time zone setting it is what it is, the time zone. Expert mode, you can offset the nozzle from the bed inside the screen right here. But this can only be done while the 3D printer is printing. So if you are printing and you see that the first layer is not flowing that well, you can come here and change the Z offset manually here. You can also change the flow and you can do the nozzle PID calibration here. And the bottom is just about, about your 3D printer. It's just all the things about your 3D printer. The next button right here is your network. So if you want to connect this to Wi-Fi, you click this, connect to your Wi-Fi, and that'll be it. And you also get your 3D printer's IP address, which you can use on two Orca slicers or Crew LED slicer. The system tab here is telling you the version of your 3D printer, or if you want, you can reset everything to default. If you want, you can also turn off the update reminder. Account is just going to be your account that you connected to Creality Cloud. And the maintenance here is just going to tell you how to maintenance uh, your 3D printer. You can scan this to get the wiki. It will tell you tips if your 3D printer is like having problems. It will give you error code, log. You can export the error code to like your USB and then you just export it to wherever else you're going to take your 3D printer, like maintenance to somebody, you just take the log to someone else so that they know how to fix the 3D printer. And the maintenance tab here is just telling you how to fix your 3D printer if there's like any problems, daily maintenance, fan check, camera, stuff like that. You can scan this QR code and it will go to Creality Wiki and it will tell you how to fix stuff or like check for stuff. Right here, if you change your nozzle size, you need to come here and change it right here. If you don't, it's going to give you an error sometimes or it's just not going to print well. I'm not sure why this is not working for me. Um, usually, many other 3D printers have this setting. You can click this and you can change it, but I'm not sure why this is not working. You can see that there's an error right there, right? So technically, we can click on this, but uh, I don't know why I cannot click on that. I did on my Cobra 3. I came to here, changed this setting to a 0.2 millimeter. But that's how you do it. If this does not work, you can just do it on your slicer as well. So yeah, there you go. That's all the setting, things inside of the screen that you can do with your 3D printer. There's a lot of things that you can do inside of this screen right here. The most thing that I do is um, the temperature change and the X and Y movement. When I want to maintenance the 3D printer, but for the K2 Plus, it's very easy, right? The bed goes down 
automatically so you don't really need to use the setting here and yeah there you go that's all the setting inside of this screen for your 3d printer there we go that's all the settings inside your screen for your 3d printer most of modern 3d printers are really similar or have a similar interface like that so i use the k2 plus as the example here many people don't really use the feature inside the screen because all they do is just like i'm going to use my slicer to control everything but sometimes maybe the slicer does not work and you need to fix the 3d printer or the wi-fi went out then you have to use the screen right the screen is there for a reason i really like using the screen it's fast sometimes you don't want to open your computer and it just work but however you do it's gonna be your choice i just feel like i need to get this video out there because i have not really seen anybody like make a tutorial of the screen of your 3d printer and sometimes i feel like it's a very common problem that people are like skip over the screen and just went online check for like the answer stuff like that but the screen has more information than we thought but that'll be it for this video i hope you found this video helpful if you did leave a like subscribe to the channel because more amazing videos like this is coming and if you still have any questions comment down below and if you haven't yet become a member of the youtube channel it helps me tremendously thank you so much for watching and as always keep on 3d printing